The casting process for the 1961 movie Return to Peyton Place involved meticulous auditions and chemistry tests to select the perfect actors for each key role. In these pivotal moments, actors showcased their talent and chemistry with fellow cast members, ultimately securing their roles in the film. The casting directors carefully analyzed each audition and chemistry test to ensure that the chosen actors embodied the characters authentically. Through this rigorous process, a cast that brought the characters of Return to Peyton Place to life was assembled, ready to captivate audiences with their performances. The directorial vision behind the 1961 movie Return to Peyton Place was focused on bringing the story to life in a compelling way. The director drew creative influences from classic melodramas and sought to infuse the film with emotional depth and complexity. Their style involved capturing the intricacies of small town life while delving into the personal struggles of the characters. The director collaborated closely with the cast and crew to ensure that each scene conveyed the desired emotions and themes. They worked to create a cohesive vision for the movie, eliciting strong performances from the actors and maintaining a consistent tone throughout. The director's attention to detail and ability to communicate their vision effectively contributed to the overall success of the film. Return to Peyton Place is a classic film from 1961 that's packed with funny, shocking, and sad moments. Keep watching to uncover some surprising facts. Have you ever been inspired by a movie in your life? What about Return to Peyton Place? Share your cherished memories and experiences in the comments below. During the production of the 1961 movie Return to Peyton Place, the set design focused on recreating an authentic New England small town feel. Locations were carefully chosen to capture the essence of the story, with picturesque settings enhancing the dramatic elements of the film. Logistical challenges included coordinating large casts and crews, managing diverse shooting locations, and dealing with unpredictable weather conditions. Innovative techniques such as advanced sound recording equipment and newly developed camera technologies were employed to enhance the overall cinematic experience. The production team worked diligently to bring this classic film to life, ensuring that every detail contributed to the storytelling and visual impact of Return to Peyton Place. Return to Peyton Place is a classic film released in 1961 that delves into the intricacies of small town life. Set in the picturesque town of Peyton Place, the movie follows the lives of various characters as they navigate love, betrayal, and scandal. The film beautifully portrays the complexities of human relationships and the secrets hidden beneath the idyllic facade of a small community. With stellar performances from the cast, the movie draws viewers into a world filled with drama and emotions. Each character's story unfolds in a way that keeps the audience engaged and eager to see how their fates intertwine. As the plot thickens, viewers are taken on a journey that explores themes of family dynamics, societal expectations, and the consequences of choices made in the heat of passion. Return to Peyton Place is a timeless classic that continues to captivate audiences with its compelling narrative and rich character development. Its exploration of human nature and the complexities of relationships make it a must-see for fans of dramatic cinema. The creation of the film's score and soundtrack for the 1961 movie Return to Peyton Place involved a collaboration of talented composers and musicians. They worked together to craft music that perfectly complemented the narrative and emotional tone of the film. The composers and musicians aim to enhance the viewer's experience by evoking the right emotions through music. By blending different instruments, melodies, and harmonies, they created a soundtrack that heightened the drama and story of this classic movie. The music served as a powerful tool to emphasize key moments, build tension, and convey the characters' emotions effectively. Through the intricate work of the composers and musicians, the music of the film became an integral part of the storytelling enriching the overall cinematic experience. Robert Sterling from the movie developed a successful family business in the 1970s. Running Sterling and Sons, a Santa Monica company specializing in custom-made golf clubs. Interestingly, the voice of Mark Steele was provided by the film's director, Jose Ferrer, not the credited actor. Jeff Chandler, known for his portrayal of Chiricahua Apache Chief Cochise, starred alongside Susan Cabot in the battle at Apache Pass. It is noteworthy that both Chandler and Cabot were Jewish, continuing the tradition of non-Indian actors playing Native American roles in Hollywood. In 1961's Return to Peyton Place, a scene that stands out is when the protagonist confronts her past in a dramatic showdown with her family. The direction in this moment artfully builds tension, 
Capturing the emotional turmoil of the characters, the actors deliver powerful performances, showcasing their range and depth, drawing viewers into the intensity of the scene. Cinematography plays a crucial role, utilizing close-ups to capture the raw emotions of the characters, enhancing the impact on the audience. The use of lighting and shadows adds a layer of depth to the scene, emphasizing the conflict at hand. Filmmakers and actors have commented on this scene's significance, highlighting the skillful direction that brings out the emotional complexity of the characters. The performances are praised for their authenticity, drawing viewers into the characters' struggles and triumphs. This iconic scene leaves a lasting impact on the audience, resonating with them long after the movie ends. It encapsulates the heart of the film, showcasing the complexities of family dynamics and personal growth. Jose Ferrer, a versatile actor, was considered for a notable role in a film, but lost it to George Sanders, who later won an Oscar. Ferrer's performance in Cyrano de Bergerac was a highlight, with Walter Hampton seamlessly passing the torch to him for this iconic role. Tuesday Weld's mention in a song by Donald Fagan further emphasizes her lasting impact in the entertainment industry. These glimpses into the careers of these talented individuals shed light on their contributions to the world of acting and music. The movie, Return to Peyton Place, had a significant cultural and social impact in 1961. Audiences resonated with the film due to its portrayal of complex relationships and scandals in a small town setting, reflecting societal issues of the time. The movie influenced pop culture by popularizing the themes of family dynamics, secrets, and ambition. It contributed to discussions on social themes such as morality, gender roles, and the consequences of hidden truths in a community. Return to Peyton Place sparked conversations about the facades people maintain and the realities that lie beneath, encouraging viewers to reflect on their own lives and relationships. Overall, the film played a role in shaping the cultural narratives of the era and remains a classic piece of cinema history. In the realm of classic films, various intriguing stories surround some of the notable personalities involved. For instance, in this particular cinematic piece, some prominent figures experienced distinctive moments worth noting. Rosemary Clooney's brother, Nick Clooney, delivered a heartfelt eulogy during a traditional Catholic funeral service, where George Clooney played a significant role as one of the pallbearers, alongside other familiar faces like Al Pacino and Beverly D'Angelo. On a different note, Eleanor Parker harbored a lasting resentment towards Glenn Ford due to an incident related to billing hierarchy on a collaborative project. Meanwhile, Carol Lindley, known for her role in the Poseidon Adventure, faced discomfort during filming due to the adverse effects of immersion on her wardrobe. Such anecdotes shed light on the personal experiences within the realm of filmmaking, adding layers to the narrative behind the scenes. The 1961 movie Return to Peyton Place received mixed critical reception. While some reviewers praised its melodramatic storyline and strong performances, others criticized it for lacking the depth of the original film. Audience reactions were also varied, with some viewers enjoying the nostalgic approach to the sequel, while others found it less engaging. Despite its mixed reviews, Return to Peyton Place garnered an Academy Award nomination for Best Costume Design, recognizing the film's visual aesthetic. This nomination highlighted the attention to detail and craftsmanship that went into recreating the world of Peyton Place on screen. For those involved in the film, such accolades serve as validation of their hard work and creativity, acknowledging their contributions to the art of cinema. The recognition from prestigious award ceremonies like the Oscars can elevate the reputation of the filmmakers, actors, and crew members, opening up new opportunities for future projects. Even in the face of critical feedback, nominations, and awards help solidify the legacy of a film and the talent involved in its production. Mary Astor had two grandchildren, Kristen and Michael, through her son Tono and his wife Patrick Aludi. Tuesday Weld, along with Natalie Wood, declined to audition for the role of Daisy Buchanan in a movie. Bess Flowers became a mother at 25 to her daughter Patricia E. Tate with her first husband, Colin Tate. During the filming of the movie Return to Peyton Place, there was an amusing incident where the lead actress accidentally tripped on her gown during a crucial scene, causing the entire crew to burst into laughter. This classic was known for its intense filming schedule, with the cast putting in long hours to perfect their performances. On set, the camaraderie among the actors and crew members was palpable, creating a supportive and collaborative atmosphere. Despite the challenges of filming, the cast and crew worked tirelessly to bring this classic to life, creating a memorable and beloved film that has stood the test of time.
In the making of this classic, various famous names in the film industry were associated. Rosemary Clooney's recognition in the Cincinnati Jazz Hall of Fame marked a significant milestone in 2015. Notably, Bette Davis and Joan Crawford were early contenders for a prominent role, ultimately won by Mary Astor. Additionally, Tuesday Wells' tumultuous personal history, including early substance abuse, suicide attempts, and scandalous relationships, added an intriguing layer to the film's production. These behind-the-scenes details shed light on the diverse backgrounds of those involved in this cinematic endeavor. Return to Peyton Place, a film from 1961, holds a significant place in film history. It influenced future filmmaking by showcasing complex narratives and exploring societal taboos. This classic inspired a wave of melodramas and soap operas, paving the way for similar works. Its legacy lies in its portrayal of small-town drama and the interplay of scandal and intrigue. The movie's impact can be seen in the storytelling techniques of later productions, shaping the way audiences engage with compelling narratives on screen. In the 1961 movie Return to Peyton Place, notable individuals contributed in various ways. Tuesday Weld was initially considered for a role in another film, Sweeney Todd the Demon Barber of Fleet Street, eventually portrayed by Helena Bonham Carter. Jose Ferrer, distinguished for his portrayal of a real-life king, is among 13 actors Oscar-nominated for such roles, including Charles Lawton, Laurence Olivier, and Yul Brynner. Mary Astor, acclaimed for portraying a pregnant character in The Great Lie, is one of six actresses to win a Best Supporting Actress Oscar under similar circumstances, joining the likes of Kim Hunter and Jennifer Hudson. These talented individuals left their mark on the cinematic landscape of their era and beyond. Rosemary Clooney was known as a liberal to progressive Democrat. Luciana Paluzzi, like many actresses who portray Bond women, felt pigeonholed after the film, facing reluctance from Italy's top filmmakers to cast her in their projects. Jose Ferrer achieved a rare feat of winning both the Tony and the Oscar for the same role, joining a select group of actors including Yul Brynner, Rex Harrison, Viola Davis, Anne Bancroft, Joel Grey, Paul Schofield, Shirley Booth, and Jack Pratt. Albertson. One of the actors from the film has a special connection to Kentucky. Another actress, Mary Astor, had a significant personal event in 1951. Additionally, Jose Ferrer has a notable familial tie to a professional Puerto Rican tennis player. In the sequel novel of the original, key characters like Dr. Matthew Swain, Betty Anderson, Leslie Harrington, and Norman Page were omitted from the film adaptation. Carol Lindley attended a professional children's school in New York alongside Sandra D and Tuesday Weld, who, along with another child model, Lorna Gilliam, featured in ads and magazines. Tuesday Weld boasts Scottish ancestry through her mother and is distantly related to Alexander Graham Bell, the inventor of the telephone. In August 1924, a Topeka Capital article mentioned that Mary Astor, whose real name was Lucille Langhank, grew up in Topeka, where her father worked as a window dresser at Crosby Brothers store. Bess Flowers became a favorite of director James Cruz after appearing in Hollywood in 1923, and she was also highly regarded by Frank Capra. In 1959, Mary Astor wrote her candid autobiography, My Story, detailing her struggles with alcohol and unsuccessful marriages, although she avoided discussing her film career. Later on, in 1971, she authored five novels and a memoir titled A Life on Film, where she finally delved into her experiences in the movie industry. These publications gained popularity among readers. Jose Ferrer, known for his unique style, integrated his pierced left ear into various roles, starting in 1972 at 60 years old. This trend continued throughout his acting career, including iconic films like Paco and Dune. Robert Sterling's ashes, along with his wife Anne Jeffries, rest together in a single urn, a symbol of their lasting connection. Best Flowers, a fixture in Hollywood, appeared in multiple Academy Award-winning films and nominees, leaving a significant mark on cinema history. These individuals each added their own touch to the tapestry of entertainment, immortalized in their contributions. In the 1961 film Return to Peyton Place, a few intriguing stories surround the actors involved. Jeff Chandler gained attention for allegedly being a cross-dresser from his former lover Esther Williams as she joked, Jeff, you're too big for polka dots. Tuesday Weld has a notable resemblance to Michelle Phillips. Eleanor Parker faced a harrowing experience in 1951 when she had to evacuate her home due to a fire while sick with the flu, carrying her young daughters to safety. The blaze caused significant damage, 
These personal anecdotes provide a deeper look into the lives of the individuals involved in this classic. Have you watched Return to Peyton Place and been touched by its story? Share your thoughts and experiences with us. Your perspective on this classic can spark engaging discussions and deepen our appreciation for cinema. Let's connect through likes, shares, and subscriptions to explore more cinematic wonders